Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2014 CFL season preview. We're taking a look at the Ottawa Red Blacks, and we're going to see how well they stack up this year versus the rest of the field. But let's start this video off by taking a look at how well they did in the 2014 CFL draft. As you can see, a heavy emphasis in the draft was put on strengthening both sides of the line of scrimmage with young talent. Five of the nine selections went to the offensive and defensive line. I want you to keep an eye on second round pick Scott McDonald, the wide receiver out of Queens, who has a great opportunity to see time as a rookie. One player in particular that I really like is offensive tackle Aaron Whedon out of Toronto. Whedon is excellent in the running game, getting his hands inside, playing with a great base, and moving a defensive lineman off the spot. In addition to what he can do in the passing game, Whedon, in my opinion, has the flexibility to play either tackle spot or even down inside as a guard. It's safe to say that the quarterback position is in great hands with Henry Burris, the 15-year CFL vet. Burris is coming off a subpar 2013 season from a turnover standpoint, but is still able to be efficient enough to lead Hamilton to the Great Cup versus Saskatchewan. Now, he's a good stopgap for a new franchise at the position as they find or groom their quarterback of the future. In my opinion, that guy is already on the roster, Thomas DeMarco, the second-year vet out of Old Dominion. DeMarco is in the mold of Burris, a guy that's very mobile that throws extremely well on the move. And he got extended playing time last year in BC throwing 10 touchdowns. So look for him to take over in year two once Burris decides to hang them up for good. The Red Blacks do possess some explosiveness in the backfield with Siobhan Walker and his game-breaking speed that's looking to get back to his 2012 form when he ran for over 600 yards. The good part about here in Ottawa is that he'll get the extended opportunities to carry the rock. I also like first-year player DJ Harper out of Boise State. Harper displays very good burst and balance and, quite honestly, is a perfect fit in offensive coordinator Mike Gibson's offense, giving the Red Blacks an explosive one-two punch. Fullback H-back Patrick Lavoie at 6'2", 240 pounds, is a dependable blocker and a solid receiving option out of the backfield, giving these guys much more flexibility in what they bring to the table in their backfield. As you would expect with an expansion team, there's going to be both an abundance of youth and an experience. And that's what we have here with the Red Blacks receiving core. And I will say this, though, there isn't a shortage on height. Big targets like Fred Rouse, who's an outstanding option. Slot back Marcus Henry out of Kansas. Carlton Mitchell, you may remember him from South Florida as well as of the Cleveland Browns. And longtime BC Lion Paris Jackson does give this unit a lot of hope. And one guy that's a prime candidate to have a breakout season is Simone Le Marcan, who showcased big playability in the CIS at the University of Iowa. You also look at Dobson Collins and Kerry Johnson. There are two guys that were buried on the depth chart on other teams that had excellent depth at the position, but when they did get on the field, they were able to produce. And the potential is here, and I think you'll see this group really start to click by the Labor Day weekend, and that's when you really start to see this offense begin to take off. Up front, the Red Blacks were able to acquire some good talent from good units around the league like Joe Eppley, John Gott, Alexander Krusnick, and Jermichael Dean. This is an excellent way to start a franchise, putting prime young talent in the trenches, and you toss in rookie 2014 draft pick Aaron Wheaton, who's a very technically sound offensive lineman that plays left tackle but can kick down at guard, inside at guard if you need him to, and you arguably have the best unit on the offensive side of the ball. The question will be the depth behind the starters as you have a bunch of first-year guys like Brendan Dunn out of Western and Matthew Albright, amongst others, vying for valuable minutes. Again, with the receiving core, as with the receiving core, how quickly this unit is able to gel will ultimately determine how much success they can have right out of the gate offensively this season. On the defensive line, the guy that stands out to me the most, in my opinion, is Keith Shalogan, who is a consistent performer for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders over the last six seasons. Last year, Shalogan accounted for 31 tackles and four sacks and should continue to apply pressure on the inside. On the edges, there's a lot of youth, including second-year player Brandon Lang, who spent the last two seasons in Edmonton playing for the Eskimos. He has the athleticism that you want coming off the edge and finally gets to showcase it as a full-time starter. Keep an eye on rookie third-round pick Nigel Romick out of St. Mary's, who can play on either side of the defensive line and also possesses a variety of pass-rushing moves. Defensive tackle Moten Hopkins, 
was taken in the first round in the expansion draft this year that says a lot about what they think about him and alongside Shalogan looks to form a formidable duo. Quite honestly, the linebacking core may be the best on the team overall. Strong vet presence right here with Anton McKenzie, TJ Hill, Malik Jackson, and Jason Pottinger. That's a very good foundation at your second level. But there's two young players chomping at the bits for that extended opportunity on an expansion squad. And that's Jasper Simmons, who's coming over from Toronto, and Jordan Verdone, who's coming over from Montreal. Now, Verdone and Simmons were special teamers with their respective teams, their previous teams, and could see extended playing time this season. But overall, this is a talented vet group that'll help the Red Blacks initially be one of the best run defense teams in the league. Defensive back Javon Johnson is entering his seventh CFL season, and he's the clear leader of this group and is one of the most instinctive defensive backs in the game. Johnson has a knack for creating turnovers and also is a valuable asset as a punt returner. He and Eric Frazier are the two guys that you can quote-unquote pin in as starters. Everywhere else, it'll be a battle for both starting roles and also reserve spots, but all eyes will be on first-round pick Antoine Pruno, who's an excellent zone player with good size and range, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him start off as a deep safety or even as a halfback early on. Second-year vet Seth Williams also factors in the mix, but mostly on the corners. This unit, in my opinion, has a talent, but depth could be a concern here moving forward. Justin Pilardi handles the kicking duties, and he has been a very solid player for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So in my opinion, they are sound in that department. I also think the return game is in good hands with Tim Maypre and DJ Foster. Maypre has had some success early in his career with the Alouettes and could succeed once again in that role. And Foster's natural running skills are tailor-made for kickoff return duties. And I would also expect Javon Johnson to hold down the punt return duties, especially after excelling there throughout the course of his career. There's plenty of reasons to be optimistic if you're the Red Blacks. Number one, you finally get to kick off your inaugural season in a brand new state-of-the-art stadium. Henry Burris is your quarterback behind a solid offensive line, and the linebacking core on defense is very talented. So there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic in year one if you're a Red Blacks fan or the Red Blacks brass. And the cause for concern is the obvious expansion blues with the youth and inexperience on the roster, along with the secondary that, in my opinion, still has a lot of question marks heading into the season. The road to the Great Cup for the Red Blacks goes as follows. Number one, everything has to gel from game one. We talked about it all video. This young football team has to gel and has to be ready to go from the opening kickoff to the final buzzer at the end of the season in order for this team to have the success they want moving forward. And they must stay in more of the black instead of the red. And this is more in particular with the turnovers. Henry Burris has to protect the football. Fumbles are his main issues. Last year's the interceptions creeped up a little bit more so than we were used to seeing from him. But the turnovers have to be a minimum in order for this team to have success. And young players have to step up game one throughout the course of the season and play like veterans in order for the Red Blacks to make it to Vancouver. I have the Red Blacks finishing fourth in the East Division. This is still a young and inexperienced football team that will go through the natural progressions of an expansion franchise, which means they'll struggle early out of the gate, get better as the season progress, surprise a team or two, but ultimately finish fourth in a very tough East Division this year in the CFL. And I also want to give a huge shout out to CFL Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.